Let's close out with the New York Jets. Now, last year was not good. Obviously, Adam Gase is gone. The uh, the win total, the odds, and whatnot, brought to you by BetUS.com. Go check out your odds there. Six and a half is the win total this year for Robert Sala. To go over, plus 130. To go under is minus 160 to win the division. Dead last, plus 2,000 to win the AFC. Way, 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 way down. Plus 6,600 to make the playoffs. They are plus 450. To not make the playoffs is minus 750. They are projected favorites in only four games. They are projected strength of schedule based on the uh, opponent's win totals this season is number 16. So right dead in the middle. The win total has gone under in four of the last five years for them. 2017 was a push, so they, they have not gone over in five straight seasons. Uh, the only way for the offense to go is up. They were dead last in basically everything last year. I mean, it was awful. Uh, quarterback Zach Wilson has got weapons this year. They got Crowder, Mims, uh, Elijah Moore, Corey Davis signed up. I mean, they, they got dudes. They got guys that should be efficient. But, um, you know, the question is, what Zach Wilson are we going to get? Like in 2019, he had 11 uh, interceptions and nine, or sorry, 11 touchdowns and nine interceptions. Is he that guy or is he the guy that showed up last season? You know, it was a significantly easier schedule for BYU last year, and he looked great. Like, he looks like a, a Patrick Mahomes clone, right? But he, which which one are we going to get, right? Do the Jets have an offensive line that can protect him? Maybe. I, you know, who knows? The defense brought in Sheldon Rankin and Carl Lawson to uh, to pair with Keenan Williams, and I think that's going to help the defensive line. They don't have, this is a team that's, that needs a lot. I mean, just needs a whole lot. The secondary is still a mess, but um, I don't know. If you get a pass rush, like, they should be okay, I guess. Uh, I've got them going under the six and a half until I see some semblance of continuity, some semblance of team chemistry that's being built here, and, and it hasn't happened yet. It hadn't happened for years. So until I see a win total actually go over with them, I'm going to bet the under. Uh, even, even here, like, I, I've got them winning four games. And I, I don't know that they'll win four games. Like I, See, I got them significantly better than that, but, I mean, I don't have them going over. I got them 6 and 10. I got them right at the number. Um, six, six, six and 11. Half, I can't get them over. Yeah. 6 and 11, yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yep. I'm, so, I'm I'm 4 and 13. Uh, you know, at, to, <laughs> to not make the playoffs is minus 750. Uh, I mean, do you believe in, in Salah? Like, you think he can do good things there? Uh, I think it'll take time. But, yeah, I think, I think Salah... I don't want to compare him immediately to Brian Flores, but I think Saul is going to come in and bring a culture. Okay. I think Saul is going to walk in. Up oh, we the door. And I think these guys are going to be reason for Brian Flores, which is addition by subtraction. Adam Gates got thrown out the damn window. So with nobody sitting in the chair, you're significantly better. Yes. I think you bring in a, a guy that's a tough, hard-nosed defensive guy. It's almost like they saw what happened to Miami and said, we got to do what Miami did. We can't bring another offensive guy in. We need somebody who's going to come in and make this team tough. That's defensive guys, not offensive guys. I don't need a brainiac to walk in here. I kind of need a meathead. And, and they went and got a guy who brought in an offensive play caller that's going to run a Kyle Shanahan-style zone-blocking scheme um, which is strange. I'm really curious, can this team run the football? Um, and what will that look like? Um, but I, I think they will be significantly more improved than they were over the last couple of years under Adam Gates. I, I, I think, think so. Was that big of an improvement from them. I, I also think Zach Wilson is a much bigger improvement than, than Sam Darnold was. I mean, I, I just do. Yeah, I... The, the Zach Wilson thing, I don't know who I'm going to get because his junior season, like he, he wasn't that great when he played against good teams, right? And he's going to play a lot of good defenses he's in the NFL. He's an opportunity to play against a lot of good teams. That's, I mean, I mean that, you know, the rest of his team wasn't that good against good teams either, though, Gary. Well, but that, like, that It's that not team, like he had Elijah Moore on his, on his wide receivers out there, okay? Uh, agreed. Agreed. Like he had other twenty-eight-year-old Mormons that were white guys running, you know, catching his passes. Yes, uh, yes, I'm with you. I, I I see what you're what you're saying here. Um, you know, they like his skill players here are significantly better than his skill players were in by at BYU. 
His offensive yes. line is substantially worse. His skill players are far better. Yes. Yes. Very much so. Skill players, much better. They they lost big to Utah that season. They beat Tennessee that year. They lost to Washington. They beat USC. Like, they they had some good things. They lost to Toledo that year. Um, they lost to South Florida. Like, it, you know, 2019 was not great. I'm just, I'm just curious. You know, I, I don't know what we're going to see there. I could I could have total optimism or I would I would like know. to bring up Drew Brees this senior year and junior year at Purdue. And let's see how good of an NFL quarterback he's gonna be based on looking at what he did at Purdue. Right. But what are we talking about? Like you John Elway at Stanford. Like what how how great were how great were those years? I I see where you're coming from, but what did they look like when they played good football teams? What did he look like when they played USC? Uh, I bet not, it wasn't not pretty great. Good. I bet it wasn't pretty. No, no, probably not. I just think that's a foolish way to do this. You you might be right, but that's why I'm questioning. I'm not saying that he's not going to be good. I'm saying I don't know. I don't know if he's going to be good. We've he's going to be tossed out into the fire, we've though. We've seen guys come from small schools be great quarterbacks for a long time. Yes. A long, long time. Yes. If Russell Wilson never makes the trek to Wisconsin, Russell Wilson's still the guy that he is today. Wisconsin didn't make him that, Okay. That's who he is. That's what he was. So go look at his junior year at college at, at North Carolina State. And then tell me that guy's not prepared to be an NFL quarterback. Yeah. You just can't okay. you just can't do that. Okay. okay. I, I That's think fair. I, hang on. If he's not good, it has nothing to do with how good or bad he was at BYU. Yeah, okay. agree. Like, agree. There in lies the issue is what you're trying to compare and look at has nothing to do with what what's actually happening? Agreed. I I think that's a fool's errand. I think it, so. The reason that I have, I, I, no, you're right. You're right. You're 100 percent right. I mean, do you see what I'm saying though? Yes, like, yes, yes. I used like, to before big time college football. Alabama's and LSU's and Ohio State's went to just these crazy all basically the Big Twelve offenses. Okay. Yes. But before the brunt of college football went to that, I. I always wanted my quarterbacks to come from smaller schools because I thought, oh, this guy played under a not great offensive line and not great wide receivers and was still able to win football games. Yes. But if you came from Alabama, there's a reason that zero Alabama quarterbacks have ever been great in the NFL outside of Joe Namath. And and he was great way after he left Alabama. Like, this is the issue is because you have everything given to you at these big schools. Then you get into the NFL where you don't have anything given to you. You go to a shitty team. It's like, Oh, I'm not good at football unless the team I have around me is great. Yeah. Well, that's tough. Like this is this. I used to want guys that only came from small schools or that struggled to fight for their jobs because I thought they know the grind. I yep. don't think that the the quarterbacks now we live in a this was remember this was ten years ago, all right. Today's you're you're running pro style offenses in high school. These guys by the time they get through college, the premier guys they're so polished. It's 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 not it's apples and oranges to what it used to be. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But there was a day and a time where I liked guys that had a chip on their shoulder because they came from small schools and were doubted. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't think that the small school has anything. I just want to look at your skill set. I look at Zach Wilson's skill set, and I said he has everything he takes to be good. I didn't see that at Carson Wentz, and I didn't see that in uh, Jared Goff. Okay. Now, I was right about Goff, I think, and I was right about Wentz, I believe. I I might be wrong about about, about, uh, uh, Wilson, but we'll see. Exactly. And that's my whole point. We'll see. We'll see what we get because none of these guys are surefire home runs. Immediately, like nobody oh, knew okay. that Patrick uh, yeah. Mahomes was was going to be what he turned into. But either way, uh, that is going to wrap up the AFC East. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com. And if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures. Or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe. And we'll see you soon.